In this video, I'm going to explain the none type in Python. We'll talk about what it is, why you might use it, and some of the most common mistakes that developers make when working with none in Python. Let's go ahead and use none in code and see what the syntax looks like. So I'll create a variable here, I'll just call it my age, and set it equal to none, and that's none with a capital, capital N. It's important to point out that this is not the same, this is not the same as the string none. So my age equals none with double quotes. On line three here, we have the string none, right? A string that just happens to have the value of capital none, right? This one word. On line one, we're using the built-in Python syntax for the none type. So Python specific thing. None is interesting because it's its own type of thing. This, for example, is a string my string, hello, we'll do hello world, right? We also have uh, numbers, right? My number, that are equal to one. A none type is its own type. And the only possible value that a none type can have is the value none. So you might be wondering, why would I ever use the none type? Well, there's one really great use case, um, and uh, there are others as well, but one of the most common use cases is that you haven't chosen a value yet for that variable. So you know that you need to capture an age variable in your application, but you don't know what the value is yet. Let's say for example, that someone just signed up for a website and they need to select their age from a dropdown, but they haven't made a selection yet. The nice thing about the none variable is that you could write some logic that says, while the my age variable is still none, it means that the user hasn't selected anything yet. Right, so maybe I don't allow them to move to the next step of the onboarding flow. If we were to like use a default value, let's say zero, that wouldn't really work because zero is technically a valid age, right? So none is this other value that we can use that we, we can write our logic around it and say, if this value is none, it means it hasn't been set yet. So that's, that's one way you might use a none type. A mistake I see developers make often is when they go about printing the none type. So for example, if I go print my age and run this code, the word none is printed to the console. That can be a bit confusing because if I just print the string none, I get the exact same output. If you're ever trying to debug your code, figure out what's going on, and you have a value and you're not sure if it's a none type or not, you can always use the type operator. So you can print type, Sorry, not the type operator, the type function. Print type my age. So this, this function here will just return the type of the thing. So in this case, if I run it, I get class none type, right? So that indicates that this is actually a none type. Um, whereas if I were to do the type of a string that just says none and run that, then I'd get class string. 